testing. Okay. This is only for the lost sheep of Israel. This recording that I'm going to send out. I'm hoping that everyone who gets this take heed to my good friend and the one who introduced me to where I'm is now, Ella Ross, I want you to know that I appreciate all that you taught me. I appreciate all that you gave me, Ella, and all that you installed in us. Because you was the foundation. You laid the foundation on how to serve, how to praise, how to be dedicated, how to give your life. And I appreciate because I never forget that. To my brother, Ella Gurley, you know, man, how I feel about you. You know I love you with all. But this ain't about us. This is about the lost sheep of Israel. And all that gets this video, I want you to first stop what you're thinking. I'm not trying to change you over. I'm not trying to make you feel like something you're not. I'm not trying to knock what you believe. I'm not trying to knock what you feel. All I'm trying to do is just give you a little more information of what's what. Take this information, apply it to your life, and see where you're at. That's all I'm trying to do. Because the lost sheep for Israel is coming. The father sent his son, and his son told the people, I only came for those. So let's get down to what's what. I ask you a question. My question comes about only to get you to think. Is you a Gentile or you a chosen one? Pick what you are. Because it's very important for you to understand what's going on. The word Gentile, and I do word study. So let's do a word study quickly. In the 4th century AD, way after the last book of the New Testament was written, the Roman movement, who was in control, took the term and made up a word called Gentile. And it was explode or exploit it to mean more than what it really had meant. They took this word and the concept of what it meant and expanded it to impass or to incorporate the heathen people. But it didn't incorporate these three groups. Now I want you to listen at these three groups who was not incorporated as being Gentiles. These three groups that it didn't incorporate was the pagans, the Jew, or the Christian. These three people was not Gentiles. So my question is this. If they wasn't Gentiles, then who is you? What is you? Everyone else who didn't fell into these three groups was Gentiles. Now, I'm trying to figure out where is we come in at. All our lives we was told that we was Gentiles. But in the history, it didn't include anybody who was. So see, if you call yourself a Christian, which I'm not knocking you, you call yourself a Christian, you wasn't a Gentile. If you call yourself a Jew, you wasn't a Gentile. Even if you call yourself a pagan or if you call yourself an atheist, 
they don't call you a Gentile. Now, my question is this. Who are you? What are you? See? The Romans spoke Latin. Because they were the hierarchy. The Pharisees and Sadducees and the Sanhedrin and all them, they spoke Greek, Latin, and a form of Hebrew. But everybody else in the lower ranks spoke a language which was comprised from the Babylonian roots. When they was in exile in Babylonia, they spoke a language that the Babylonians wouldn't have understood what they were saying or what they was worshiping. And this language followed them all the way back. And all spoke it, even the person who you know as being the son of the living Elohim. And that language that they spoke spread popular through nothing but the lower class. So, I want you to hear this. The Latin word that called Gentile. They took it from a Hebrew word that called Goya, G O Y, or Ethos, E T H N O S. Now, these words meant people and nation in the Hebrew tongue. Now, I did not say Aramaic. Aramaic was the spoken word of the lower people. The same word that the Emmanuel, as you would call him, spoke. Same word that our brother, who is our brother, spoke. He spoke Aramaic. But in the Hebrew word, Goya mean people. Ethos mean nation. Now, if I put it in a plural form, and you spell it G-O-Y-I-M, Goyim, and then put the article H-A with a hyphen in front of it, meaning Hagoyim, when I speak of that, this meant the nation. This meant anything that was not of the Roman class. Anything that was not affiliate with the Roman push. And I'm here to tell you on this. I only did eight minutes. And I want y'all to listen closely. You just don't know how much you is still serving Rome by not knowing who you are and what you are. First, let's go to this revelation as y'all know it. And we gonna look up something. And I'm going to ask you a question. You come into Revelation. Hallelujah. And I ask you a question. Who is the 144,000 that John saw? Now, everybody in his Western Hemisphere always want to relate to the number that he saw that had no number. All people, places, tongues. You always want to equate yourself into that. But 
I got a question. In Revelation, the first chapter, in, in the 14th verse, Revelation 1, 14, it says, and I want you to listen, and his head and hair were white as wool, as snow. His eyes were flame of fire. His feet were like burnished brass, as if it was refined in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, that what John saw. I want you to back up to the Old Testament so nobody won't get up here and say he's standing on one scripture. I need you to go to Daniel. That's in the Old Testament. 10th chapter. And the 6th verse. Well, let's start with the 5th verse. Then I lifted up my eyes, and I looked and saw a certain man dressed in linen, whose loins was girded with the gold up hats. I'm reading out of the scriptures. This is the book that I read because it's Hebrew. I'm reading out the scripture, and your King James may read a little different. And I know all of y'all stand in pride and what on King James. I'm not going to sit here and go into that. But I'm reading out the scriptures, so it sounds a little different. It is a lot different because all the Hebrew essence been put back in the book where the Romans took and replaced the Hebrew essence with Latin and Greek. But it'll be okay. It says, And his body was like burl, and his face like the appearance of lightning, and his eyes like torches of fire. And his arms and feet like polished brass in appearance. And the sound of his words was like a crowd. Now my question is this. Who is this? Daniel saw him, And he wrote a description of what he saw. John saw him. And he wrote a description of what he saw. Now, this is my question. If you find out who he is, then you'll know who you is. Okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Hmm? I need you to go to the last verse, which is 68. And if you will, tell me who these people is. In my book, it says, Yah. So when you hear me say Yah, in your book, it, re it was either replaced with God or Lord. So that, that's, that's that Roman flair that, you know, crazy. But anyway. And Yahuwah shall bring you back to Minstrum, which in your book would say Egypt, in ships, by the way of which I said unto you, you are never to see it again. There you shall be sold to your enemies as male and female slaves. But no one to buy. I got a question for you. What other race of people ever was taken from their place, packed into ships, sold into a nation? Which let me let me get it for you. Uh, go to verse sixty-five. 
and it speaks. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me go to verse 64. I'm going to read verse 64 to you. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. And Yahuwah shall scatter you among all people, and from one end of the earth to the other. And there you shall serve other mighty ones. Neither, ne neither you nor your father have known of wood and stone. And among those nations, you are to find no rest, nor have a resting place for the sole of your feet. But there you who shall give you a trembling heart and failing eyes and sorrow of being. And your life shall be in hang in suspense before you. And you shall fear night and day and not the certainty of your life. In the morning, O oh, that it were evening, and at the evening you will say, O oh, that were the morning, because of the fear of your heart, with fear, which because of the sight of your eyes, and who shall bring you back, and you will remember. Now, my question is this. What other people, no matter night or day, that me and you can be married and another man come in the house and take your wife and lie with her and send her back to you? What other people? What other people planted crops? And didn't benefit it, not a nickel from it. What other people labored, growed, cleaned houses, was not their house? What other people, I'm asking you now, what other people endured this nation that took their baby? went down to the Everglades, used their babies for gator bait to lure big alligators. I'm talking about children. What other people? Now, come on. I'm trying to get you to understand who you are and what you are. What other race of people ever forever when you look at them they is hated up until today at this very moment that I'm doing this video what other people and you're not hated that you did anything to anybody you're hated just for the color of your skin what other people now, let's get this straight. In 1948, all you who served that entity that you call your God, in 1948, you jump and you smile and you holler because you say Israel became the state. Have anybody stop and look back and really seen what was this magnitude for? You was blown, trust me, they fed you so much crap that you even jumped and you understood it. And you took it in. And you took it for a word. And I need you to go back and read. And understand. How these Russian. Yugoslavian. Czechoslovakians. All these race of people. Who is never ever. had any linkage to your father 
who is named Yah. You call him God, but his name is Yah. Because if you look into Psalms, if I'm not mistaken, I want y'all to listen and get this straight. If you look in Psalms 68 and 4, in your King James Version, they changed the Y to a J because in the 1700s, the Renaissance, this is where the, their lie was so fabricated that even you fell for it. In Psalm 68 and 4, it says his name. But in the King James Version, they changed the Y to a J in the 1700s. Because why? This is what the decree of the Romans placed. In order to get a people, in order to get a nation, in order to get the imitation, see, you always got to have the original. The original always is the blueprint for the counterfeit. We know this. Now watch this. In 1948, Israel became a state. But if you go and look in the Jewish almanac and read, it tells you in states that we are not Hebrews. We are Jews. Jews took on the Levitical priesthood and they come through the line of the Sanhedrins and the, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees who is in power in Israel today. But these line of people was the one who the father said, I came to them. I sent my son to them. And Yahushua HaMashiach, which you know him as Jesus, and we ain't going to get into that right now. No name switching, no name calling, because if I start talking about the name of Jesus, you'll get so offended that you won't hear my words. So we're not going to go into that part. We're going to go into what he said he said I came to my own and they knew me not and the reason why he said he came to his own not because of flesh and blood but because of what they're teaching remember whenever they told him that your mother and your brother's out there he said who is my mother and my brother my family of these who is among me who is studying and teaching and knowing who the father is this is why he tell them whatever they tell you to do do it but don't follow after them because why they is counterfeit now in 1948 the counterfeit or the counterfeit came full swing Israel became a state and Britain, the United States, Russia got an agreement that they will allow all the ones who they say Hitler put in concentration camps, gassed them and whatnot. They allow them, them Jews, and I did not say Hebrew, I said Jew which before they were Jew, they were called Lews, L-E-W's. They allow them people to go in a part of the Middle East, as you call it, and occupy a land in the middle of the Palestine border, right? And they called it Israel. Now my question is this. I want you to think about it.
this land that they formerly and sucked the Jews in took place of the original Hebrew people. It replaced them and replaced the promised land. Because all of you who got your books, all of you who can read, knew good and well that the promised land was in Canaan. Not Israel. It was in Canaan. But because you didn't understand how the Greek and Latin way eradicated any Hebrew, any person of a Hebrew descent, it eradicated him. What you mean? In 70 AD, all prophecy that Yahuwah Hamasiel, or you call him Jesus, said was fulfilled. He said there would not be one stone left upon one another. All be desecrated. In 70 A.D. that happened. And all of the Hebrew people fled and went to where everybody knows as Egypt. Which really was Africa. When all the Hebrew people fled to Egypt, well Africa, well the coast of Africa. I got a question for all you who call yourself Africans Americans. I got a question for you. Who told you that you was an African American? Your masters and your oppressors. And the reason why they told you that you was an African American is because they paid for you in Africa. And don't believe this crap about they stole you. They did not. Because in that time, Britain was empowered over Africa. And if Anybody from America who already broke away from Britain, already left Britain, if anybody from America would have went on British soil and stole people, don't you think it would have been a bit war? Yes. But see, this is what you don't realize. The people of Africa went out and conquered anything that wasn't of African descent. Put it all in storehouses and sold them to the people who came across the seas to buy workers. Now, if you was of a Hebrew descent and wasn't of African and you fled from persecution from Jerusalem and fled to Africa, you were sold as a slave. Was it African descent? I'm finna answer one of your age old questions right now. Everybody always asks this question. If there was a God, as y'all say, if there was a God, well, why is so much suffering in Africa? Why Africa is going through this? Why Africa is going through that? See, you never put two to two together. This is why he says, study to show yourself approved. A workman needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. If you do a little studying and look, you'll realize Africa sold. I'm going to use your term. God's people. That's why he suffered. Africa sold 
all the ones that migrated from Jerusalem that came down into now watch this 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 really finna get you to separate themselves the nation, the Roman power to be. Redraw the map to separate Egypt from Africa that you would never ever realize that when they fled from Jerusalem down into Egypt, watch this, watch this, I'll bring you back. Remember when King Herod threatened to kill all the children? Where did Joseph and Mary went? They went to Egypt. Where was Egypt? In Africa. But they won't tell you that. Now, the great writer Josephus, he saw them. And if you read in your book, Paul was even mistaken for an Egyptian. Why? It's black looking. Hebrews, Egyptians, Nubians, or Ethiopians as you know it. All them three look just alike. Go study and find out yourself. Why do you think the army shot up the Sphinx? Not because they won the war and they were bored and just shooting. Because he looked it too much like a black man. I ain't trying to start no race understanding and no race picking. I'm giving you truth. If you want to categorize that race and this and that, that's you. But all of them high Romans officials went down and began to look at all them hieroglyphics and artifacts on the wall and they saw that your brother my brother Yahushua Hamasiah or you call him Jesus is black and the first thing they say we can't have a savior who is black and we got them enslaved as slavery. We can't have this enslaved image representing our whole world. So here come the Renaissance, the change of art, culture, religion, beliefs. They took everything that was Hebrew and they changed it and gave it a Roman flair. The same one that hang on your wall is what you call it an idol. It's not. So either John and Daniel is lying or that picture on your wall is lying. Somebody got to realize. And my thing is trying to go dead, but guess what? I got the power. There you go. Somebody has realized. If you read the scriptures and take the scriptures and place them to what you see, you'll see that they don't add up. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not fighting you on no words. I'm just trying to make you realize who you are. You ain't African Americans. Yes, you is people who ancestors was brought out of Africa, that was paid out of Africa, but you're not an African descent. Ask yourself this question. Why you don't act like the African? Why your mindset is not like the African mindset? Why do even the Africans hate you 
and tell you ain't pure blood. I want you to just take these questions. I want you to study them. Because see, I don't have to go into all this. All I want you to do is wake up the lost sheep of Israel and see who you is and know who you is and stop taking on the curse and the ways of the Gentiles because you're not Gentiles even the book says don't do the ways of the Gentiles but then you will place yourself as a Gentile you either chosen or you're not because he said um, let me get it well I can tell it to you Many going to say unto me in them days, Lord, Lord, as you read in your book, haven't we cast out devils in your name? Haven't we done many wonders in your name? And he going to say, depart from me. I know you're not. Your work was work of iniquity. Why did he say he knew you not? I'm going to give you the answer, and then I'm going to bid you shalom, because I I took up 36 minutes of your time. You want to know why he said he didn't know you? Because you served the idol that's on your wall and not the one that was in the scriptures. You served the image that you saw on a cross. Hmm? Which he got so mad in Deuteronomy because why? Them women was in his temple praising Talmud's. Who the cross represents. The real Emmanuel or the real one died on a stake, was hung on a stake, not a cross. All this made up Easter stuff that you're seeing, it was made through the Roman Catholic Church, and you follow it every day. You stand in it every day and not realizing. See, Passover is for the Hebrews, not, not the Jew, because the Jew is a made up people who took the Hebrew place. And Father gonna get them. Trust me. That's why you don't see no peace over there. If everything was good and dandy, there would be peace over there. That's why it's going to be a new Jerusalem. Because right now, the abomination of desolation is happening. That was already profaned in Daniel. That all the Gentiles is treading all over there. Now, who you think the Gentiles is? The Jews. You see them buck at the wall like that. See, that's from Tammuz. That ain't got nothing to do, huh? Ain't got nothing to do with your Savior. Ain't got nothing to do with the Hebrew people. I need you to stop and open your eyes. Anybody that get this video, I want you to go and study your heritage and know that you is set apart. That's what Yahushua and them was called set apart people. It wasn't called Jewish. They wasn't called Christians. It wasn't called pagans or Romans or none of that. They were called set apart people. Because why? They were set aside for the masterships. I'm going to say this and I'm going to go. Even the one who you have done put before everything told you it's not that me, nothing that I do, but it's what I see my father did. This is what I do. It's my father that do it. So why, why, why would you deny the father and only worship the son now? Only worship the son. And the son himself told you, it's my father that does it. I 
bid you shalom. Peace.